Good morning, and thank you very much for coming. So uh, we are releasing the results of the international patent activity in the international patent system for last year. Uh, and there are only three things that I, I shall say, and then I'll ask Carsten Fink, our chief economist, to perhaps make a comment to also. Uh, <clears throat> the first is that worldwide the decline is 4.5%. Uh, so the number of international patent applications went down by 4.5% across the world. And I suppose the thing to notice about that is that it, this is a smaller decline than what we hear has happened at the national level, indicating, in other words, that uh, in making choices, companies seem to have favoured <coughs> their, in inverted commas, best uh, inventions, that is, those for which they're going to seek international protection. Uh, the second thing I would say is that the impact of the crisis has been, as, as we, I think, all know now, very uneven across the world. And you will see from the press release that in the case of, of Northeast Asia, <coughs> the number of international patent applications coming out of China rose by 30%. 29.7%, uh, which is an extraordinary result. Uh, from Japan, however, also the number of international patent applications rose by 3.6%, and from the Republic of Korea, uh, the, the number rose by 2.1%. So this confirms a trend that we have seen consistently over the last five years in particular, but the trend continues despite the uh, economic crisis. And interestingly, China moved past France as the, to become the fifth largest filer of international patent applications. So it is, as you will see from Annex 2, yes, uh, it's the United States first, Japan second, Germany third, Republic of Korea fourth, uh, and China fifth. Uh, and interestingly, you have, therefore, the three Northeast Asian countries in the top five uh, filers, Japan, the Republic of Korea, and China. Uh, and when you go to the companies, and you see what uh, is happening in respect of companies' filings, and this is Annex 3, in the top 20 companies, you have four from the United States, six from Japan, one from China, three from Germany, two from uh, the Republic of Korea, and four from other EU than Germany. So uh, overall, what you get is uh, four from the United States out of the top 20, four from the United States, nine from Asia, and seven from Europe. So it's quite an interesting evolution that we're seeing. Uh, and I didn't mention, and it's the last thing I'll say, that as opposed to the maintenance of, of numbers of international patent applications or indeed great increase in the case of uh, China, Japan, and the Republic of Korea, what you find elsewhere in the world is that the United States went down by 11.4%. So the number of international patent applications filed out of the United States declined by 11.4%. Uh, in Germany, it went down similarly 11.2%. In Canada, 11.7% also. Uh, you have more details in the press release itself, as well as in the annex, which where you can compare the particular countries. But it's quite significant. Uh, and I'd like to ha now hand over, before your questions, if I may, hand over to Carsten, who uh, can say a word about this too. Good morning to everyone. Um, I maybe just like to say one or two things. Uh, you know, certainly uh, this uh, is um, the first decline that uh, we have uh, seen in PCT filings in its over 30-year history. So certainly that is a significant event. Uh, it is not entirely surprising, given the depth of the economic downturn that we have uh, seen associated uh, with the financial crisis. Uh, but you know, certainly this. Uh, has been uh, something that has been unprecedented in the history of the PCT system. That said, I think there are reasons to be 
you know, hopeful um, looking into the future. Um, you know, certainly I think by now we know that uh, um, what has been going on in the global economy is not a repeat uh, of the Great Depression of the 1930s. Uh, you know, I would argue that in part uh, due to the uh, monetary and fiscal, fiscal stimulus programs uh, that you have seen, you have seen a global rec uh, economic recovery. Uh, last month, the International Monetary Fund um, revised upwards its outlook for global economic growth <clears throat> by three-quarter of a percentage point. Um, predicting uh, global growth of about 4%, um, and that compares to negative growth in 2009. Um, there are obvious differences. Uh, you know, the, most of the growth uh, in 2010 is expected to come from emerging economies. Uh, the International Monetary Fund predicts uh, about 2% uh, growth in the advanced economies and uh, about 6% growth in uh, the emerging economies, and there is a great amount of uncertainty attached uh, to the global economic outlook, not least because of the phase-out of some of the government stimulus programs we've, we have seen, and the fact that, you know, sort of autonomous private uh, sector demand uh, is still not showing much signs uh, of, of picking up. I think as far as what we expect for this, for this year's PCT filings are concerned, I think we can be reasonably optimistic that there will be a modest uh, recovery, but again, there is a great amount of uncertainty um, attached to it. You know, on the one hand, uh, uh, there are indications that um, research and development expenditures or investments uh, have fallen last year, and you know, one would expect that uh, to find its way into um, PCT filings. Uh, on the other hand, there uh, are also indications uh, that uh, some of the firms that held back with patent filings last year, uh, partly because uh, they were constrained in cash flows, uh, may come forward uh, with additional filings in 2010. So there are certainly um, reasons to be optimistic, um, but I think we would say cautiously optimistic about uh, what will happen this year.